Morning, Church. Today's scripture reading is about Mephibosheth, David and Mephibosheth. Shall we pray the prayer for illumination? Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do to Christ our Lord. Amen. Second Samuel chapter 9 verses 1 to 13. David asked, Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They called him to appear before David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba, your servant? He replied. The king asked, is there no one still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? the king asked. Ziba answered, He is at the house of Machir, son of Amil, in Lodabar. So King David had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Machir, son of Amil. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, your servant, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him and bring in the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Ziba said to the king, Your servant will do whatever my lord the king commands his servant to do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah, and all the members of Ziba's household were servants of Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table and he was crippled in both feet. This is the word of the Lord. Speak to God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning, for this wonderful and beautiful and cooling morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you brought us here safely. This moment, Lord, we ask and pray that you open our hearts, Lord, so that we might receive your word with gladness, Lord. We ask and pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Before I start, I think I want to share with you all my heart. <laughs> Pastor Andrew said he was so relaxed, but I got no time to tell him. You know not, Pastor, how stressed I am. Morning, I was in the, in the office. Sister Nancy saw me coming out. I said, wow, I you broke sake today. Sorry for using the word, huh? Lao Sai Dua Kali. Honestly, every time when I preach, I will have butterflies in the stomach whatever you call it. And I will go to the toilet and really have to unload two times. And I also told that to uh, uh, Kompeng and... Is it Kompeng, eh? Kompeng and Boon Hock, I think. But they're all very good. Like, said, don't worry, brother. God be with you. I know God is with me, but psychologically, I don't know why. Long call, two times. Short call, five times. So stressful. <laughs> so I can understand. Pastor Andrew is feeling relaxed. I can understand how nice not to be seated down there. Yeah, okay. Another thing... This one we call it the uh, entree, la, eh? the, when we start before the main meal, we have the entree first. The other thing that was sitting down there when Shirley, Sister Shirley sang the, the, the song that she said she picked up from Young Life, for once, I think a few of us will agree, la, myself, Kong Peng, Amy, and I think Gun Hong, we will feel that for once we are so young, yeah, because we are in Young Life. But Shirley says she's too old to be Young Life. That means myself, Kong Peng, Amy, and Gun Hong. We are slightly younger than Shelly. That's why we are still in young life. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, over the far, 
past few weeks, I think Pastor Andrew has been sharing with us the vision of the church which uh, the LCEC uh, has come up with, something which the church can work towards to, something which the church, uh, church, not the building, I'm talking about the people, something which all of us can help each other and we help ourselves by doing something so that Melaka Wesley can be an attractive church. Not so much to be a popular church, but indeed to be attractive to people, especially those non-believers, those people outside, so that as they see us as Christians, as members of Melaka Wesley, and automatically they'll be attracted and they would want to know, hey, what is the difference with uh, members and friends of Melaka Wesley? So that through this attractiveness, people, many more people might come to know the Lord. And I think over the last five or six years, we've been hearing sermons not only from Pastor Andrew, for, for me, for many other uh, pastors as well. But time and again, we see that or we hear that we get the same message again and again, again and again. It's actually like the message of the Bible you know, from beginning right to the end. Talking about Israelites, uh, sin, repent, sin, repent, sin, repent. And I think for us to be an attractive church, I think Pastor Andrew has spoken so many sermons probably about 200 over sermons, at least, uh, over the five years, maybe, uh, plus, minus, yeah? And then sometimes when, for us to prepare, we ask ourselves, what else to talk? Uh? We have spoken about almost everything under the sun, and yet, when we look at our church, alamak, I still like tak jalan like that. Uh. Why, uh? what's wrong? But never mind, we still have to do the necessary, and I think words like uh, DG, quiet time, journaling, discipling, we have heard so many times over the last few years. And now we are going to hear about the word vision, 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 love, 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 love one another. I think we all also, uh, I won't say boring lah. Next time, if there's any one of you who, who is expecting a baby, I mean a couple, maybe we, if you are going to have a triplet lah, first child you can name it as DG. Oh, okay. Second one is QT, quiet time. And probably the last one, the younger son or girl that comes out, we can call it journaling, so that it can help us to remember what Pastor has been sharing over the last few years. Today, uh, I want to share with you all one particular word, or, or, or you know, related words, which is kind or kindness. The first one, I mean, we look at the word uh, kind first. Yeah, kind means. It is an adjective showing sympathy and understanding and benevolent and gentle. Wow, not easy, yeah? Let's take a look at kindness, the noun for kind. It means benevolence, favorable disposition. And what is the meaning of benevolent? It's an adjective. It means kind and generous. So all these three words are actually interrelated. So last week, Pastor Andrew did uh, share a bit from 1 Corinthians 13 about love. We know that love is uh, uh, patient, love is kind. So today we are going to look at the word kind. Yeah, Being kind and showing kindness is also part and parcel of love. Maybe we can look at this word, we can look at this um, adjective. How we can be kind to one another to reflect God's kindness in us so that indeed Melaka Wesley can also be an attractive church, not a popular church, right? an attractive church because of our kindness, because we are kind to one another, because of the kindness that we extend to each other, to other people. And apart from this passage, there's another uh, passage which I think we're all quite familiar with. It's actually the story about Ruth. It talks about God's kindness to Ruth and Naomi. And in uh, Ruth chapter 2, uh, verse 20, we see here uh, about uh, the kindness of the living uh, and the dead she added that's what uh, was spoken uh, by Rubia the man is at our is our close relative he's the one of our guardian redeemer so we see God's kindness right in the book of Ruth as uh, stated in Ruth chapter 2 verse 20 and also actually the entire book of Ruth so the kindness of God is actually one of the main themes in this chapter that we have just read just now. And it simply means, you know, God's uh, kindness being extended to us. God's benevolence, the mercy and favor of God given to us, extended to us. Who are we? 
the undeserving people like you and me. If, if it's not because of God's kindness, then we are all nothing. So here we see the story of Matthew Bosher, who was crippled around five years old. You know what happened was that when uh, John, Saul, King Saul and um, Jonathan has passed away, word came uh, to the family that the father and grandfather has died. So the servant, one of the maids, actually took uh, Matthew Bosher away, tried to run away, probably to save their life. And in the midst, in the process of running away, this small little boy fell down. And according to uh, Samuel 4.4, 2 Samuel 4.4, his leg became crippled. Both his legs were crippled. And since five years old, he was a cripple. And during that time, if we know the context of the story, when uh, kings or when people are in power, when they die, the descendants, if they are powerful enough, it's okay. They will try to take over the throne. But if they are not powerful enough, they normally will run away because the king, the present king, or the one that has just taken over, might seek out for their life. So it's always been a kind of danger, you know, for whoever that is not so powerful. And I think if you look at our country, sometimes we also see the same thing, right? We have father who is uh, prime minister, and then we have the son who is aspiring to be a prime minister, and we have, uh, we, in our terms, we call it political dynasties. They accuse each other. And if they are from different camps, from the ruling or from the opposition, they always try to say more bad things about the other side so that my family becomes the more superior one. Of course, maybe we have not seen murder yet, lah, yeah? but I'm talking about, you know, when people are in power, they try to uh, outwit each other. Other. And in this kind of situation, we look at uh, David and also Matthew uh, Bosseth. So we have to try and think that both of them are actually it's like they are, they are concerned, they are quite frightened of each other. But despite and in spite of such situation, David was a man who is after God's own heart. And we can see clearly how David handled the situation very well. So, last week, we also uh, saw pastor showing a, a list of uh, characteristics. So many of them, like, why people do not want to come to church. And prayerfully, we can, you know, cancel all those words one by one, one by one, so that indeed, Melaka Wesley can be an attractive church. Yeah? And when I say uh, attractive church, it's not our physical building. It means us, the people, the members, and friends. So how we can be attractive? One way is that we can be kind to one another. Show kindness to each other. Just like David. He did not finish off the descendants of Jonathan and King Saul. But instead, he did just the opposite. Yeah? So here, the, the theme that we see here is that we see David's dealings with Matthew Bosheth as a picture of God's kindness to lost sinners like you and me. We are all wretched people, sinners. You know, probably many of us, including myself, we have many of the characteristics that Pastor has showed to us last week, the survey that is being done. Why people sometimes avoid coming to church? And Paul also saw the kindness of God in the coming of Jesus Christ and the complete work of Him on the cross and Paul's imagery of us in the heavenly realm in the new future, in the near future. People like us, nothing, but because of God's grace and God's love, we are something. So, Melaka Wesley can be kind in order to be attractive by learning a few things from the story from King David. The first thing that we can do is that like as King uh, David did, seeking out for opportunities to show kindness. Yeah? So David seek out for Matthew Bosheth. And because of his heart, he did not only seek this uh, uh, man because of his physical deficiency. Yes, we know that he is a cripple. It's mentioned so a few times. Yeah? But 
looking at the character of David, he was actually a man who was after God's own heart. And why he did was his own character. Yeah? He was loyal to God, previous anointed king. And he was also loyal to his promise, to his vow that he has made earlier on with Jonathan and promised to be good to his descendants in 1 Samuel 20, 14 to 17. And so, David did what he was supposed to do and he seek out for this uh, particular descendant of uh, Jonathan, Jonathan's son. And by now, he's already 21 years old and also having his own son by the name of Micah, Mika, verse 12. But, and Jonathan is dead. So he look out for his descendant, uh, Jonathan's descendant, to show love and kindness. So here we are, David looking for Mesopotamia by asking Ziba. Ziba is like the estate manager, somebody who runs the uh, things for the, the, the family. Yeah? And he took the initiative to look out for uh, Jonathan's descendants. And I think we, thank, we can thank God in the same way also, yeah? that God also look out for us. And we can be thankful and praise Him for giving us the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. And if we all believe in Him, we will be forgiven of all our sins and we too will receive God's kindness. And Ephesians 1 verse 6 reminds us yeah, to continuously to praise God, yeah, to the praise of His glorious grace which He has freely given us in the one He loves. Who? He loves Jesus Christ. The one that He loves, God has given to us. And in Ephesians 4 32, we are called, we are reminded to be kind and compassionate to one another, to members of Malacca Wesley, to our friends, to our colleagues, whoever they may be, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you and me. So, King David remembered Jonathan. He remembered what he needs to be doing. And God likewise remembers us and he seek out uh, to show kindness to us. And I think likewise, since we have received God's kindness, we too can be uh, an attractive church yeah, by making ourselves attractive, looking out for opportunity to be kind to one another. And sometimes when I look at uh, being kind to people, I think quite a number of times as Christians, as members of Malacca Wesley, we could have missed one or two good opportunities whereby we can share our kindness, whereby we can share our love to other people, especially those who are seated right in our midst. Maybe I should give a pop quiz. Huh? A few years ago, we have a group of people always sitting somewhere around where Gilda and Auntie Margaret is sitting. There will be about two or three rows of uh, gentlemen, some Eurasian, some Chinese, yeah? We have boys from the Shikina homes. I think many of us will remember them, yeah? But uh, as I reflect back, you know, when I was looking for examples, I think probably during that time, I'm not saying all of us, but I'm saying probably majority of us could have missed that opportunity to show and to extend our kindness to people who are on drugs. And I dare to say that many of us are in fact quite frightened. We dare not even go near them. Even if we see them in the toilet, we just say, hi, hi, hello. That's good. And the only branch of our uh, ministry you know, that uh, will always remember to invite the Shikina boys home, the drug addicts or those who are undergoing drug rehab in Shikina homes will be the Baba gathering. But those were the days. Yeah? So, as a church, as we look around us, I think we still have many opportunities to show, to extend our kindness to people. Especially so, people who are not quite the same like us. Especially so, people who are not quite the same like us. 
whether in terms of social standing, whether in terms of character, whether in terms of education, I think we need to take a step forward. We need to, to actually really seek out and to, to, to try our best and to show kindness and be kind to people that are not of the same category as us. And I don't want to go into further details that, you know, how Malacca Wesley have been having not quite a good reputation as being quite a rich church and not so popular. I think we all know. Sometimes it's quite hard for us to swallow that fact, you know. But we can uh, counter this uh, so-called uh, perception. If all of us, you and I, yeah, we can start by seeking out to do good, seeking out to be kind, seeking out to show kindness to other people. And we don't have to go far. I think I've mentioned it almost in every of my single sermon. We have the orang aslis in our midst. We have our migrant workers. We have our uh, migrant work here, the Myanmar, the Nepalese, the Agape Center. We have many opportunities to show our kindness or to be kind to one another. And the second thing that David did was, the second point, doing what is right when opportunity comes. So David had learned that, yeah, there is indeed one of uh, Jonathan's uh, son is still around by the name of Matthew Boucher. And after he, he knew about the whereabouts, he immediately took action. He summoned and he brought or he asked for him to be brought into the palace. And he did not waste time. And even though this this man, this 21-year-old boy, by the name of Matthew Boucher, is not someone who is, I wouldn't say useful, you know. He's, he himself said he's a, like a dead dog. He's a crippled man. Two legs tak boleh jalan. How many of us will actually take in someone who is uh, not able to move physically, you know, to bring him into our home, to care for him or her? Any volunteers? Oh, I saw no, no one. Huh? Oh, she's just waving to the husband, not to me. Huh? Any volunteers whereby we can bring in someone, you know, uh, paralyzed, uh, tak boleh jalan, bring into our home and we care for them and provide for them and give some of our property, our shares, our rumah, give to this person. Very unlikely, yeah? Yeah? Very unlikely. But David did the right thing when the opportunity came. Yeah, and if you look at um, Matthew Boucher's situation, he himself knew that he's so unworthy. In a sense, inverted commas, not so useful, you know. And he himself said that a dog like me, crippled on both legs. We are all sinners. We are all nothing, wretched people. So now, as we look at both David and as we look at Matthew Boucher. It's like God and us. Yeah? So when we talk about kindness, when we talk about showing kindness, you know, we have in, in this kind of situation whereby God look at us and that we too need to recognize that we are actually nothing in the eyes of God. But yet, God chose to show His kindness to us. So, David did what was right. Call him, brought him in, even though the poor chap could have felt frightened yeah, in case King David wanted to kill him and finish him off. Like I've said, those days, political dynasties, they tried to kill each other's descendants so that it would not be a threat to their throne. So David did the first move and David took a action. So likewise, when we look at ourselves, when we look at our lives, it's a simple biblical truth, yeah? God looked out for us. God did the necessary. God took action. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for you and me. While we were still doing all the nonsense that we can think of, yeah? So, David's action clearly reminds us that God is the one who has reached out to us. And because of that, because of that ancient relationship, when God reached out to us, 
we have been reconciled to God. And I think it's only appropriate that in as much as we have received kindness from God, we too need to extend the same kind of kindness to other people. After looking out, we need to take action. And like I've given examples, we have OA work around here. We have our Agape Center just within our uh, church vicinity. And many of us have inquired and we have heard about the Orang Asli work. But how many of us have actually got our hands dirty in actually getting involved? Yeah, of, many of you have. Yeah, we have visited the Orang Asli villages. We have volunteered in the English tuition classes. But I think as a church, if all of us can do more, yeah, I think that will be fantastic. That will really, really be fantastic. Help out in agape. Not just giving money. Yes, money is also one of the ways we can give. But to be actually be involved in the work that Melaka Wesley has embarked on. Age doesn't matter. Don't worry, you know. And many of us can tell me, Pastor, actually, uh, let the young people do. Uh, you know, let young people like Kong Ping, Amy, Danny Chiu, uh, and Gun Hong. All these young people, they can do. We all are uh, senior citizens. Don't catch me, uh, you know. But Pastor Andrew always reminded our staff in, 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 in the devotion, even he, he told me personally that, you know, when we look at our lifespan, the, my previous sermon, let's say our lifespan is 70, 80. So if we are, this one I'm saying uh, due respects to everyone, yeah? no, no evil intention, okay? If we think, let's say, if not, I am 75, I'm going to be 80, and I think by 80, yeah, I show common, I show jalan on, huh? so I left five years. Shouldn't I be working even harder to serve, to show kindness to people rather than waiting for me to die? Because my time is short. If I'm young, if I'm 25, oh, I got 60, 25, 30, 40 years or more. Oh, I can still wait, I can still wait. But I'm not saying that young people should wait. No? I'm just saying that we do not know when our life will end. So, there should not be any reason. No? Whether young or old, we must be doing. Show kindness straight away. Don't wait until we cannot jalan, until we cannot do anything, then we want to show kindness. Start now, la church. Yeah? Start now. You see, like, the funny thing with us is that, for example, when we go to the bank, uh, we know we need to withdraw money or we need to do some transaction. The bank closes at 3.30 or 4. And then we will hurry up to go so that will be in time. Right? When we, but when it comes to serving God, for example, we know we expect or we just aga aga like we're going to we have another five years or three years uh, uh, to, to complete or before we meet our maker. Then we take slow slap or show kindness. Oh, I cannot go, I cannot do this slowly, slowly, slowly. But when we want to do our things, we can do it quickly. So I think when we have found the opportunity, look up opportunity, when we have found opportunity, we need to do or take action immediately. Yeah, and the third thing which King David did was he uh, we can show kindness is by going beyond in showing kindness. Yeah, he brought this crippled young man into his home, but he actually unofficially adopted him as his own family. Not only did he restore his land that, that his father Jonathan would have inherited from King Saul and the descendants. He actually invited Matthew Bosher to come in and live in a palace and to eat at his table. Just imagine, if you are invited to dine and wine with the Duli Yang Mahmulia, Yang Di Pertuan Agong, and he says, half of Kelantan uh, Forest Reserve, I'm going to give it to you. You can cut all the locks that you want uh, and your descendants can stay in my palace. Yeah? I'm tempted to say our PM or our XPM, but I think I better not say. Huh? So, adopted into the family, and what David did was, he did more than what was actually required. You know, he was so kind and generous. And I tell you, it's not easy in David's position to bring in a crippled person in both legs, but yet David did what was right. 
yeah? Matthew Bosa who has felt like a dead dog in the beginning he now has been restored not only restored but elevated over and above from what he could have expected like in the story of the Good Samaritan didn't he actually do slightly more than what was required not only helping him but he actually gave a letter of guarantee to the innkeeper and so when we show kindness when we want to be kind to people i think we need to go beyond what is necessary and that will actually attract people and that will actually you know make us attractive to the people outside so these are the three things that we can learn from king david from the passage that we have read this morning but i was also reflecting on Sometimes I think why it is so hard to invite a person into the church. Yeah? Why is it so difficult? Maybe you look at our own context. Why is it difficult? Again, I said, no offense to anybody. Yeah? So if you are really interested in making Melaka Wesley attractive to other people, I think we should also look at maybe our flaws, maybe our weakness or maybe what are the things that we have not uh, done quite rightly and we try to adjust so that indeed Pastor Andrew will not waste his breath by his, you know, talking love one another do this do that and then twing, twing, we never do anything yeah and in the event in the event that many of us are very busy and we don't have the means financially and we don't have the means the time because we are all very busy people yeah we cannot show kindness to people we cannot be kind to other people i think the least that we could do is our fourth point we can be kind by not being unkind there's no scripture verse huh? so i said it's a more of application for our church yeah the least that we can you know how can we be kind we can be kind by not being unkind don't get confused huh? actually at first when i was trying to figure out what words to put huh? it sounds confusing okay let me explain many of us have come to many of you all have come to see me that yeah pastor you cannot lah i cannot do this i cannot do that okay acceptable but i think the least that we can do is that even though if we cannot show kindness one thing that we can do is that we don't go to the extent of being an unkind person. That is worse because Sudala you are kind. Then you become one kind by being unkind. Yeah? You being one kind by being unkind. So when people look at us, Apa lah, I mean, even you, one kind one. You know? So unkind. And he's one of a kind because he's unkind. Yeah? And people get turned off. Ayo, do want to go Melaka Wesley lah. The people they all one kind one, you know. So unkind. And I think if you look at ourselves, if we are genuinely wanting to be an attractive, I think this is one area whereby we can improve ourselves. I'm not saying that all of us are unkind. I'm saying that we can learn to be kind by not being unkind. Yeah? the least that we could do i give you some real practical examples i've not got permission from catherine to share but i think hopefully she won't get angry and she will stop cooking for me <laughs> i think many of us many of you all will know that uh, both catherine and i we are from laka wesley we, you know from young we attend this church and if you look at catherine's character she's a very quiet lady and if you ask her to makan she will not makan in rangers hall how many of you all have noticed that i think a few of you all have said right and i think one of the reasons was that for us for me and Catherine, as a family we have gone through a lot of challenges because many people have been unkind to our family in a sense but i also thank god that there are many kind people over the last few years yeah it's right. not all but I'm saying that in the earlier years. 
And I can share because we ourselves have experienced it as a family. One example, when I was young, standard one, I think, standard one or standard two, around 69, 70 or 71, my mother used to work as an ama, a maid. Lah. Now we call it Indonesian maid, or Filipino maid, or Indonesian maid. Those days we call it ama. My mother used to work in Trinidad camp. And when the army, when the British army, the New Zealand army, and the Australian army left Trinidad camp, my mother still had to work. So she worked for, lo and behold, church member was very kind enough to offer my mother uh, a, work, uh, a job as a cook, as a washer woman, as a washer lady. Lah. That means we, she works from 8 o'clock to about uh, 6 o'clock or 8 o'clock at night. Uh, yeah? And one day she came back, she was very upset. I think, if I remember clearly, I was very young. She, um, I think she cried. I said, Mommy, why? Why are so nangis? He said, Tadi, uh, uh, you know, so and so wanted to pass me a box of matches. A box of matches. But instead of passing, passing the matches like this, uh, okay, now, nah, her lady boss actually threw the matchbox on the floor and asked my mother to pick. And it was our church member and a member of LCEC. Excuse me if I cry, yeah? I try not to cry. And it's a real example, and this incident always is in my mind. I wasn't there to witness. And that was not the only incident. And when I was growing up in my secondary school days, there's another employee of a church, an old man, you know. And I think Auntie Helen may know this particular man. You know, my mother used to work also together, not the same employer, but under the church. And then my father and my mother asked, Hey, after tak mau jadi Christian, tak mau datang church? He said, tak mau lah, tachi. Bestie church dengan orang lah. Tengok orang macam semut. Tengok orang macam semut. And in Peranakan language, I think we know what it means. It's not a kind description of our people. There are many more examples. And I think many of us seated here. Sudahlah, we are not kind to people. You know, we, I mean, we don't extend kindness. But we do a lot of unkind things. Sudahlah, we cannot attract people. But we make people tak suka us. Yeah? And I think this is one area that we can be careful. Hmm? A very practical example, if a newcomer comes to church, uh, okay lah, because Avon is the youngest and the most prominent one, uh, I can kacau him before he kawin. Because when he kawin, I cannot kacau him. Uh, the wife will scold me. Yeah? For example, uh, Avon is a new visitor. He comes in. And I happen to know him. Yeah? This fellow, uh, he's a gambler, you know. Utang along, he does all the funny, funny things that we can think of. And instead of helping him, I go and gossip. Yeah, gossip, the other time, Pastor Andrew, uh, is one of the things that people don't come to church because why? Church members are gossipers, right? So I can gossip about, uh, even, you know, he, uh, last time, uh, he utang this along, la, 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 la. I, I tell all the bad things about Aaron. And he comes to know that I, as a church member, did not extend any help to him, but instead, I look down on him, and instead, I gossip about him, and I talk bad about him. And I think, if he comes to know about it, he will definitely never again step into Malacca Wesley. Yeah? And I think, this morning, what I want you all to do is that we reflect on our own lives now. Uh, don't look at other people. In the, as much as I share this morning, I am also telling myself that I should look at my own life, whether I've been kind to people or not. Yeah? And many of you all, many of us seated here, we are bosses, we are mates at home, we are workers in the company. Sit down and pause. How kind have we been 
to our mates and employers, eh, employees. Sorry. I mean, if you don't, if you just give them the basic things, like whatever that is due, their annual leave, their, you know, their basic wage, their salary that we have agreed upon, if, you know, we stop by being unkind, I think at least there is hope for us to evangelize to our mates and our workers. But when we do unkind things, when we say unkind things, then it makes it more difficult for us to reach out. Don't talk about being attractive. It will just turn people off from us. And sometimes, being Christians, I think we, we need to learn how to, how to reserve our comments on other people. Speak only when necessary. And I think when we speak only when necessary, I think we are also being kind to that person. Yeah? When speak when necessary. In conclusion, if you have forgotten of all the examples, never mind. Yeah? We see David's dealings with Matthew Boshar as a picture of God's kindness to lost sinners like you and me. And Paul also saw the kindness of God in the coming of Jesus Christ and his complete work on the cross. Ephesians 2, 7 to 9. Let us look at the verse. In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, God's grace, yeah? Express in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. And for this, by grace you have been saved and through faith. And this is not from yourselves, not from ourselves. It is a gift from God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And Titus 3, 4 and 5. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy, He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And so, we need to show kindness because God has been kind to all of us. God has been kind to you and me. So, we are God's chosen people. We need to show kindness. Colossians 3.12 reminds us that, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. God bless you.